We have some experience with climate financing mechanisms. We have the GEF, we have the climate investment funds, we have a carbon market program. But what's coming down the pipe is really many times larger and more complex than that. So we not only have to get ourselves ready as an institution, and, and we are, but we also have to help our countries understand uh, what this new world of climate finance looks like and how they can how they can play a part in it, how they can make how they can make this this finance work work for them. I think in essence it boils down to uh, you know climate finance readiness. Again here there are several definitions. I, I find it quite helpful to refer to the one UNDP uh, has, has published uh, pretty recently which describes how readiness really encompasses four four dimensions and you know it's basically about planning so how can you how can you have a long-term uh, objective of, of developing a, along a low carbon climate resilient development path with everything that that entails. Uh, then it's about accessing uh, finance which, which is how do you make, how do you put together projects and approach the sources of finance to actually get the funds and then it's about delivery which is how do you, how do you coordinate the different levels of government or the different actors and stakeholders. Uh, how do you make them work together in such a, such a way that finance is actually channeled to those who are implementing projects. And finally it's about, it's about mo monitoring, reporting and verifying. Uh, climate finance is a special type of finance because it's attached to a certain condition and that condition is that you must be able to prove and have someone verify that in fact uh, investments are leading to decreased emissions, uh, increased re uh, resilience to climate change and preferably, preferably both. That's something that's still very complex to do. So, I think there's a role for ADB and others to play in this and I think the Asia Leds partnership is, is a great forum to you know bring those issues to the fore and and, and and you know discuss where can we really make a difference for countries and, and help them get ready for this upskill kind of thing. Well, you know, um, the ADB works along several lines, and, and being a being a development bank, primarily our our function is to is to provide finance to both public and private sector clients. But increasingly, we're seeing that clients are demanding uh, more more knowledge from us. Uh, climate change is a very complicated topic. People need to understand what impacts and what 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 the impacts are and what options they have, and also uh, countries are looking to us to help them find partners. Uh, no institution acting alone will be able to uh, seriously address climate change. So it's about building coalitions of the willing around this, around this issue. And that's, I think, something that ADB is particularly good at. I think we can bring people around the table. Uh, we're seen as a, as a, as a neutral intermediary uh, with, with goodwill. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, that's a role that, that uh, we're happy to play and I think will become more, more important in future. Support to countries uh, ranges from, you know, policy support uh, to, to loans. Uh, a lot of what we do is in, well, it's principally clean energy, uh, sustainable transport, uh, you know, uh, sustainable urban development. Uh, a lot uh, we do also increasingly with, uh, you know, managing land use and forests for, for carbon sequestration. We do uh, support countries that are struggling to adapt to the impacts of climate change. So it's, a, it's really a, a across the board. I really enjoyed those presentations on the economic costs of climate change, which might seem a dry topic to some, but I'm an economist working on climate change, so I, I, find, that, I find that fascinating. And I think looking at those headline numbers really, first of all, shows that we're working on something that's pretty, pretty urgent. And, and really a huge challenge. I mean, we're talking about changing the way that we produce energy, uh, grow food, live, you know, uh, on this planet. And, and that's, you know, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty uh, sobering, I think. Just looking at the dry numbers, you know, if you, if you see what's going to happen in at least South Asia, uh, you know, with, with an 8.8% per, 8 .8 GDP loss projected by the end of the century, so not too far away, that is that is larger. That's a larger number than those countries will be growing economically. So, in a way, if you would factor in climate change, you know, you're actually undoing all the other development advances that you'll be making in health, education, you know, other types of other types of development initiatives. You know.